slim that nothing short of a miracle could ever bring the person back. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of daring attempts to change the course of events on Rescue 911. We begin on the morning of February 2nd, 1991, along a stretch of road that winds through the rolling hills near Paso Robles, California. Gordy and Jane Ortiz and their two teenage children were heading for their weekend place in Heritage Ranch. The ground was still damp. It must have rained pretty well the night before. There was a car in front of us. It was a Jeep Wagoneer going the speed limit. Bonnie Hogue, driving right behind the Ortizes, recognized the driver of the Jeep, 17-year-old Kim Potts. I knew the car well. Kim was our babysitter. I used to watch my children. It's a very beautiful drive. But when we get on this one particular road leading to the ranch, it's a very windy, narrow road. just seemed to come out of nowhere. There was no, absolutely no way that uh, it could have been avoided. Get in the car, Jane, get in the car, get in the I car. I can't help those people. I didn't think, I just jumped out of the car. Mom, call for help! All the homes are back off the road. And you get in an accident, unless somebody else comes by. Come on, come on, get You're out there alone. Door. Get up! <laughs> The car was already starting to smoke inside. I tried once, twice, three times, four times, and I couldn't get it open. Albert! I made three attempts to reach 911. It wouldn't go through on the cellular phone because we're in a these hills and the the trees. We're in the middle of a valley. So I dialed the actual operator. She couldn't hardly hear me, so I was shouting at her. I felt angry. I felt helpless. I felt like I was losing one of my own children. You can see flames coming from the other side of the hood. Her window was down, but the steering wheel was crushed right on her lap. She was pinned in. I just wanted to help her so bad. I can remember vividly turning around to my daughter and my son, and I said, Tina, Gordy, start walking away. Take off, go. I didn't want them to see her burn to death. When we continue, it was obvious there was not much time left before the car was being totally engulfed. All I could think of was that I was going to watch that girl burn to death in front of my eyes. A crash had left 17-year-old Kim Potts pinned in the wreckage of her burning vehicle. Several passing motorists who'd stopped to help desperately worked to free her, but they couldn't pull her legs out from under the crushed steering wheel. The call for help was immediately relayed by the operator to the Heritage Ranch Volunteer Fire Department. Less than two miles down the road from the accident, Kim's parents, Michael and Carolyn Potts, were waiting for her to get home. She had called me from town, told me she was on her way, and I knew exactly how long it took. When the trucks came by, I immediately felt uh, a pit in my stomach. Uh, I just knew something had happened to Kim. Yeah, I'll go check what's going on. You put the my wife gave me a, a look, and uh, to make her feel better, I started down the road, expecting to 
have my daughter pass me at any time, and I would just ride home with her. It's a type of scream you'll, you'll never, ever forget. And it was within seconds that the flames went nuts. I didn't think anybody was going to be able to do anything. It's a horror that you don't ever want to live. I had run up to people and I'd, I'd ask them, do you have a fire extinguisher? And some people would reply and other people would just stare at me as if maybe I was speaking some other language. Oh my God, do you have a fire extinguisher? Oh my God. I needed help. I needed a miracle. God, I needed a miracle. And she was already starting to catch fire. Every time I came back, it was almost as if it was a different person in there, from the long blonde hair to getting shorter and shorter, and before you saw a clear face, and then before you knew it, it's a, a red face, and it was, it's just something that I'm, I'm never going to forget. Gary Busis was heading up to some property he owned in the area when he came upon the crash. It was obvious there was not much time left before the car was being totally engulfed. All I could think of is that I was going to watch that girl burn to death in front of my eyes. By the time I got to the car, the uh, passenger side of the car was engulfed in flames, but I could not lift her out through the window. I remember that I had a chain in my truck. At least I thought I had the chain in my truck. I was concerned that I would not get back in time, but it seemed like the only thing I possibly could do. Jack Foster and his wife were stopped down the road by the traffic from the accident. I told my wife, I'm not going by there. That car is ready to blow up. And then one of them yelled, there's a girl in here and we can't get her out. By the time I got back with the chain, the claims were vastly greater. The terror and torment that must be going on in that girl's mind I had nightmares about that for weeks and weeks after that. Like 15 seconds after I got the victim out of the car, the total car was engulfed in flames. The, the car burned entirely, even down to the tires. When I touched her arm, it felt like a piece of hot cardboard. It didn't feel like human flesh. She was so hot and just so smoldering. But there was no water around. I love you. I love you. Please don't leave me, okay? I'm right here, honey. I'm not going to leave you. I will not leave you. She kept telling me that she loved me. And she'd scream out in pain. Tell me that it hurt. I wanted her to live, but... I didn't think it was going to happen. Paramedic John Dunkel assessed Kim's condition at the scene. The first thing I thought about is, God, this poor girl, what's going to happen to her life now? And the second thing I thought about is, this has got to be a parent's worst nightmare. I could see a little smoke in the distance. Uh, so I rounded a curve and saw this dark Jeep sideways on the road and the ski racks. I knew it was our car. <laughs> oh, my God. He's going to be okay. Oh, my God. You have a Kim Potts in there. The driver said, we have a Kim. I'm going with you. I, mean, I just felt my world fall apart. Kim was airlifted to the burn unit at Sherman Oaks Community Hospital, 170 miles away, with third-degree burns over 35% of her body. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
They uh, told us the extent of her injuries and that they were life-threatening. They're just something we couldn't deal with. Either my husband or myself were with her 24 hours. There were many times that I just, I just hold on to her and, and, and just try to somehow make the pain come from her and, and go into me. I just, it was so hard to, to watch her. Just a little bit more. For weeks I was having nightmares of Kim being mad and screaming that, you know, why'd you do this to me? Why'd you save me? Look at me. What kind of life is this? I needed to hear her voice tell me that she was glad to be alive. Straighten the elbow. Straighten the elbow. One of the hardest things was to see Kim building up courage when she knew she was going to have to go through something like physical therapy. She's always been shy and quiet. It was just amazing to watch. I was really surprised how strong and how determined she was. We were told she wouldn't walk for 12 to 18 months, and uh, she was determined to, to walk for her graduation. That was her, her goal. Dr. Michelle Brownless treated Kim at the burn center. It was a miraculous cure. She was in our burn center just shy of two months. And there was a magical transformation from really a teenager to a full woman. After weeks of painful skin grafts and physical therapy for her burnt limbs and shattered leg, Kim was able to leave the hospital. On June 13, 1991, just four months after the accident, Kim's class graduated from Paso Robles High School. Kimberly Fox. I just want to tell everybody that helped in my rescue, I just, I owe my life to everybody and I'd do anything for them. They, all they have to do is call me. She's even told me that when she becomes a doctor, if I'm ever sick or anything happens to me, she's going to take care of me the rest of my life. But um, I told her she really should major in geriatrics, so <laughs> I won't need a pediatrician. The men and women who rescued Kim were honored for heroism by the California Highway Patrol. One year later, her family remains close to them. Calling you? When uh, the situation got very dangerous, they didn't back off. They stayed in there. <laughs> well, they made a difference on this earth, and it's, uh, not all of us can say that. I felt that by itself may justify my life. She now, if she has something on her mind, she speaks her mind. If she wants to do something, she'll go and do it. Good things can definitely come out of near tragedies. Many good things. 